Hi everyone and welcome back to our quiz game series. In this episode we're going to work on the timer for our questions. So therefore it would hide everyone's answers until the time has expired and then reveal what they've gone for. Let's jump in and take a look at how to set this up. So for the timers to be in sync is very difficult because of latency issues. So there will be a slight delay no matter what you try and do, even if it's just the slightest. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to the player controller and over here we've got this ask question set up for owning client. When we begin asking the question, that's when we want to set up the timer. And the client's going to look after the timer, so they get the visual side of it. And then the server is going to handle the actual timer to check that everyone has finished their thing. So after we do ask question, we're going to do set timer by event. And we're going to set in a time here of 10 seconds, for example. And then promote that to a variable. We need it to be a variable because we want to show it on the UI later on. So we need some way to show that. Next is the event it's going to call. So we're going to drag that out and do create event. And we'll create a matching event here and do uh, timer expired. And with this timer expired here, we want to replicate it. So if I go over to replicates, I want to replicate this on the server. So the server is going to get told by the client when they finish their timer. Okay. And then when that happens, we want the, the server to check that all of the controllers have finished their timers. So to do this, we're going to do get the game state. From the state, we're going to get the array of players, which gives us the player states that are there. We're going to for each them. And we are then going to take the array element here and we want to get the controller. We're going to cast to our PC quiz. So I'm going to check to see if the player controller's quiz timer is valid. So I'm going to drag that out, get the timer reference. And we're going to see if it is currently active. So active by handle. We're going to put that into a branch to handle whether or not it should break out of this early. Speaking of which, we're going to make this a function. So without the time expired, we're going to select the rest of it, not the red bit. We're going to right click and collapse that to a function and we're going to do check timer status. And the server is then going to use this function to go through and check all the player controllers. If this is true and it's still active, I'm going to return out of this. And I want to return out of this and say, um, turn value, not input, sorry, output. Return value of false. If it gets through the whole loop without ever hitting that, that means all the timers have completed successfully. So we're going to put it on completed and tick it. Go back to my event graph. And I'll check timer status. Once that is returned there, we're going to put that into a branch. And if it's true, it means that everyone's finished and we can reveal the answers. So we're going to make another an event on our player controller and we're going to make this an owning client one so a client and this will be reveal answers and this will be replicated to owning client and call that on here okay um i'll just move this up by a near question um there you go. Okay, so when the timer expires, the server's going to check all of the controllers to see if they've all finished their timers. If they have, great. That means then the client will reveal the answers. When the client reveals answers, they need to access, similarly, what they've done in their HUD uh, here. 
we want to get hold of and uh, change the UI elements. So we're going to copy what we've done on uh, Ask Question and copy the Get Hard Cast a Hard Quiz. Put that on here. And then from our Hard Quiz, let's go over to here. We want to make a function in here to reveal answers. Back to our player quiz, player controller quiz, and then do reveal answers. Okay, next, reveal answers. This is actually going to edit the HUD here. So let's go over to our UI, HUD. And we want the question screen. And in here, I just want to make it tie it to it so we can see like hey is it done yes so what i'm going to do is on the graph is just do a binding to that uh or not even a binding actually just do a print string some event reveal answers we'll just do a print string for now saying hello so all that's left to do is go back to our hard quiz and on reveal answers, we'll get our question screen and we'll do reveal answers. Well, save. Let's go ahead and test that out. So what we'll see after 10 seconds is the print string happening in the top left corner, indicating that the timer has completed. There we go. So you may notice that hello is only saying it for the client. And that's because the client was the last one to finish. But also we need to tell everyone that we're finished. So in this client reveal answers, we need to have in here the loop going around and telling all the controllers to uh, do this. So rather than doing only client, let's change it to multicast. Like that. Okay, so now on the question screen, let's rather than having the hello and no visible timer, let's add a timer bar to this. So I'm going to put it right above here. Uh, so let's go for bar. Put that in there. And we'll change the stylings of this somewhat. So let's go to style. Background image. We'll give that a uh, rounded box in here. We'll get some padding as well. There you go. Um, yeah, and we'll give it, uh, let's go for black. And the outline settings for this, we'll set to white, to match what we've got over here. Width, we're going to go for five. Oh, I forgot to, uh, okay. not five then, uh, one, two, we do two. Yeah, that'll do. So that's the background image. The fill image is slightly different. So that's filling up like so. As you can see, we don't want it to do this sort of square cutoff bit. So I'm going to go draw as rounded box for that as well. And give it the outline settings that it needs. I'm going to go and change the width here to match what we've got in the other one. And that'll push that forwards into the scene a little bit, into the uh, widget a little bit. Okay. And we may bring out the end of 2.5, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Do that. So that timer will fill up the bar like so. So to make that link up now to the player controller, we're going to set that default back down to zero. And go to the graph. And on the construct of this, where we're getting the game state and all that stuff, we need to get the player controller. So we're going to do get player controller. Pass to PC quiz. And from there, we want to get the timer. And we'll just promote it to variable just so we've got it. And, and then we need to update it all the time. So we can go to the tick event. Get our timer. And we want to get the time remaining. We also want to get time elapsed. The reason why 
is because you can't get a thing where annoyingly you can't just say get total time on timer that I started off with. So what we need to do is get the time remaining time elapsed, add them together to work out what the maximum time was when it started. So let's add these together. And then we're going to do a normalized in range. Normalized range. Range. There you go. Uh, the range max will be our addition here, and the value is going to be our time remaining. So we can put that into the value there. And normalize the range here, we'll now squash it down to make it fit our bar. So we're going to do the question timer. Uh, no, did I not do it as a bar? No, okay, did I not make it? Yep, not variable. There we go. Usually helps. Bar timer. And then put that there. Set percent. Okay. So that will handle that. The revealing of the answers, we need to reveal what everyone answered on their answer sheet. So all we're going to do is we're going to change the visibility of the, the slot that we have on each of the answer slots. So let's go to the answers and on the horizontal box I've got down here, spacing it across. Um, one thing I noticed, by the way, with my uh, bio responses here is I want to set that up to fill the available space rather than rely on the spacer because it gets a bit weird about it. Um, but anyway, that'll do there. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do this as hidden. So we're going to go to horizontal box here and Actually, we we'll just leave the box player responses, it'll be fine. I'm going to change the visibility of this by default to hidden. Okay. And then on the option screen, to the graph, we want to get the answer array. And do for each. Get the box responses set the visibility to not accessible self and all children so let's take a look at that in action now i think that's all that we needed to do okay and the Time is not moving the bar, so let's figure out what's gone wrong there. So the bar wasn't going down, and the reason why that's the case is because the player controller is asking the question first. So it does this ask question, and then it does the timer setup to make the question timer valid. However, the question timer then is not valid by the time we ask a question. So what we need is for this to happen before this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse what I've got here into a function and do start timer and we'll put that at the start here so that way the question timer variable is valid by the time the ui gets added to the screen so yep that will go through that there was one other thing I noticed too that I wanted to fix was the uh, reveal answers was ha wasn't happening for the server. And the, the issue for that is, as you can see here, on the get HUD. So get HUD is targeting the player controller of the self. Okay, so this player controller. We want to get the player's player controller, not the specific player controller. So with the target, you can drag out and do get player controller. And... That will now handle it, ignoring the ownership of the player controller. It'll just do it to everyone. Okay, so that'll go through there. Um, I also wanted to fix, I saw, I wanted the time uh, to, um, on reveal answers to hide the timer bar. So we'll get the bar timer and we'll set visibility of that here to hidden 
Okay, now test it out. So now we can answer our questions. And we should see the answers do themselves. There we go. Excellent. There you go, we got there. We managed to add a timer to our question that is synced up, as well as then revealing the people's responses to the question. However, no one's getting into points yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a timer-based point system. So basically, the faster you answer the question, the more points you get. You can see that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early before anyone else from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to our patrons for supporting the channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.